Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. The Sting is a 1973 American caper film that's set in September of 1936. The film stars Paul Newman, Robert Redford, and Robert Shaw. It was directed by George Roy Hill, who had directed Newman and Redford in the western Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. The story was inspired by real-life cons perpetrated by brothers Fred and Charlie Gondorf and documented in a 1940 book that was called The Big Con, The Story of the Confidence Man. The storyline goes that following the murder of a mutual friend, aspiring con man Johnny Hooker, played by Robert Redford, teams up with old pro Henry Gondorf, played by Paul Newman, to take revenge on the ruthless crime boss that was responsible for the death, that being Doyle Lonigan, played by Robert Shaw. Hooker and Gondorf set off implementing an elaborate scheme, one so crafty that Lonigan won't even know he's been swindled. As their big con unfolds, things don't go according to plan, requiring some last-minute improvisations by the duo. The director wanted the film to be a stylish one that accurately reflected the feel not only of the 1930s Chicago, but also of old Hollywood films from that era. He, along with art director Henry Bumstead, and cinematographer Robert Surtees devised a color scheme of muted browns and maroons for the movie, and a lighting design that combined old-fashioned 1930s-style lighting with some modern tricks of the trade to get the visual look that he wanted. Edith Head designed a wardrobe of snappy period costumes for the cast and the art department created inner title cards to be used between each section of the film that were reminiscent of old Saturday Evening Post illustrations. The director also wanted an unknown face to play Robert Redford's love interest, Loretta, so that audiences wouldn't project any preconceived ideas into her character. The actress chosen to play her Demetra Arliss had heard through the rumor mill that Universal executives didn't think she was pretty enough to be Redford's love interest, but the director fought for her and got her. Paul Newman and Robert Redford were each paid a half a million dollars for their role. This was an extremely high rate for an actor working at that time. And during the filming, Redford was recovering from a broken right thumb that he sustained in a skiing accident a few months before filming started. Numerous times in the film, he uses his right hand, oddly, to avoid using the thumb, such as holding a fork with four fingers, but not the thumb. Although the prospect of reteaming Paul Newman and Robert Redford seemed viable. The studio did have a concern. The fact that in the movie the two con men's partnership hinges on the possibility that one or both will try to double cross the other. With Redford and Newman so famously chummy, Universal was concerned that audiences wouldn't believe such a betrayal was possible, thus causing the film to lose some of its suspense but the director assured them that that wouldn't be the case. The writer of the original book, David Boyer, sued the production for plagiarism, claiming that the screenplay that was written was based too heavily on his 1940 book. Universal settled out of court very quickly for $300,000. This kind of irked the screenwriter David Ward, who had used many nonfiction books as he compiled his research for the screenplay. Ward got the idea for the movie when he was working on the script 
for Steel Yard Blues from 1973, which included a pickpocketing scene. When he did some research into this, he found himself reading about all sorts of con artists from the past. He wrote the script with Robert Redford in mind as Hooker, but Redford initially turned down the part. Even after he changed his mind and decided to do the film, he didn't expect the movie to be a hit. Robert Shaw got the part of Lonigan only after Richard Boone and another actor had declined it. George Roy Hill saw the screenplay strictly by accident, but once he saw it, he asked for the director's job. He routinely showed his projects to Paul Newman, and Newman was pleased to join this one. The director wanted to shoot the picture on location, but they then came to the realization that it would be much too hard to get the period appearances right. In the end, the only location shooting was just a few days worth in Chicago and L.A., with most of the exteriors being filmed on Universal's backlot. The few location shoots that they did do were problematic because of having Paul Newman and Robert Redford in the film. Crowds would always gather and reactions would be akin to the arrival of the Beatles in 1964. The production company couldn't believe what they were seeing. Newman and Redford made a point of not taking much of this very seriously, and they concentrated on the work at hand. Now, according to Paul Newman, on one afternoon of friendly drinks together, an assortment of practical jokes were triggered between himself and the director, George Roy Hill. Hill invited Newman to his office for a drink one afternoon. Just before, however, Hill told Newman that he had no beer or vodka and asked him to pick some up and bring it with him. Newman agreed to this. Later, Newman sent Hill a bill for $8. Hill responded to the bill by sending Newman a three-page letter about the nature of friendship and how Newman had abused it. Newman responded to this letter by cutting Hill's desk in half with a chainsaw and leaving a note that said, This isn't about friendship. It's about $8. And I may detonate the entire bungalow next time so I wouldn't mess around. Later, Newman received a bill from Universal Studios in the amount of $800 to pay for the damage to the desk. Newman never paid it. Take a look back at this exceptional film. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.